Is there any part of theoretical computer science that you consider useful, interesting? Well, understanding time complexity of algorithms is very important. So you definitely should do that. And that's something that's taught classically in computer school. Um, just understanding the different paradigms of programming languages is important. Like you should know functional languages versus imperative languages versus you know declarative and whatever. You should understand recursion. You should understand Boolean logic very well, very well. But yeah, honestly, most of the stuff you really need to know you probably can learn in one semester or a year at most. You don't need like a four year CS because it's mostly bullshit. Um, okay, well, operating systems actually, you should understand what an operating system really is and how it works and what services it provides, like what a file system is, how that works. You should know data structures, right? So you should understand how data structures work and live in memory, and you should be able to do some basic stuff like you should be able to build given a, a comparison function you ought to be able to build a binary tree and you know navigate that tree in order or pre-order or whatever you should understand that stuff for sure you should be able to insert something into a tree in sorted fashion like i don't think it has to be a super bananas like red black tree or anything but you should for sure be able to know how to insert something into a binary tree so that when it's traversed uh, that item will come out in order with everything else um, you should know the basics of sorting algorithms you don't have to know super tweaky things about any specific ones but you should know the basics that sort of goes along with time complexity i mean there's things like that you know it's it's non-trivial but it's also not four years you should know how floating point numbers are represented and how they work. Okay, concurrency, you should understand, you know, you should understand what data races are. You should understand how to solve them, like how to not have that problem. Um, and that also tells you about databases, right? Like you should understand what a database is and, and how that works. Again, you don't need to go super deep into it. Like we had like a semester long database class that I never took. You don't need that. But I think if you understand concurrency and then try a little bit to make a simple database that has, you know, out of core storage, you'll kind of get it. Yeah, like implementing malloc is good. Again, you can start with a very simple thing like a bump allocator, right? And then go from there. That's a that's a totally reasonable thing to learn. It's a bunch of stuff you don't know. Well, uh, I gave you a list of what to know then. It's not a complete list, but it's a lot of it. If you know, if you know all the things I said, you're better than most JavaScript programmers. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, like I said, it it really doesn't take long to learn those things. I mean, some of them are moderately so. Like operating systems is a moderately big topic, but again, like at UC Berkeley or whatever, there was only like one operating system class, maybe two. Grammars are not worth bothering thinking about for the most part the only reason computer science school spends so long masturbating about grammar is because it was a thing that was formalized way back in like the 1950s and 60s i guess mostly the 60s back before we'd figured out a lot of the interesting things to do with computers and so it just became part of the canon but it's honestly not something to bother with for the most part yeah computer science curricula have a lot of stuff that's a waste of time so like you know we had this one class where there was just like a lot of different trees and it's just like who gives a crap like if you need to know that's fine right just pick the major ones do them mention a bunch of the rest of them in like one lecture and say look there's if you ever need one of these you can go look it up you know like the thing that's really missing from computer science school, at least back when I took it, was serious programming practice. Like we should have spent a lot more time programming than we did. Um, and part of that is the it was so inefficient, the time that we spent, because it was like in bullshit languages like Scheme, so you spend all your time debugging. Like that's no good. You spend all your database classes doing bullshit about Bacchus and Hour form, that sounds like a very bad database class.
very bad because that has nothing to do with data space databases that's like parsing the query language or some crap i mean you should date you should definitely like for databases okay there's basically two things there's concurrency uh and normalization are the two big topics in databases so if you understand data normalization that's very good you spent three weeks learning to balance a b plus tree by hand that also sounds like a giant waste of time your database courses was all about relational algebra. That kind of sounds like a waste of time. You think your discrete math course was one of the most useful classes you took in your degree? I don't, you know, I don't remember liking discrete math that much. I mean, it's definitely like knowing about permutations and all that stuff, you know, is pretty good. But like, I honestly don't remember that much from discrete math. Linear algebra would have been way better for what I do, except our linear algebra class was not that good. You need you need to take linear algebra from Sheldon Axler, and then you'll be good. I think it's because the teachers are unqualified, or why do I think so much time gets spent on useless stuff? It's just there's some idea of what the classic computer science curriculum is, right? And that doesn't change very quickly. And, okay, I think... You know, just like the average programmer is worse now um, than they used to be because the field has grown so much, the average computer science teacher is worse now than they used to be. Like, probably even a little before I got to school, like in the 70s or something, the average computer science teacher was probably really pretty good. Like new in terms of knowing what they were doing, and I think that's been going downhill consistency consistently since then. It started going super downhill once the web happened, um, and so you know the teachers that are not that good, they're mostly just cargo culting, right? Like you need like a I mean Richard Feynman didn't do much computer science, but you need a character like that to like set agenda in terms of what gets taught otherwise it's like a, a giant committee a giant distributed committee meeting and that's not going to produce anything really good if a 30 year old computer science major like you is realizing how little you know is now making efforts to learn everything i'm talking about and making game from scratch is too late for your age based on how long it might take to learn everything no you can learn you can learn the basics very quickly okay don't worry about that the important thing is, of course, you do have proportionally less time than if you had learned this stuff earlier, but not that much less. Like, look, I mean, I, I took like five years in college. So I was like 23 when I dropped out or something and knew, didn't even know a lot of these things that I just mentioned. I knew, I knew a lot of them because they were taught, but I didn't take, like, I didn't take the database classes. So I learned about databases later on my own, right? So... You know, you're missing a few years there, but it's not that bad, and you can make up for it with uh, diligence and uh, the true desire, the true desire to crank, right? And again, working on a project like that, like if you're making a game that you really want to make, you're going to learn more efficiently than people usually do in school, because having something to focus like that is very good.